What are some of the best and most effective writing productivity tips you could use? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become A Writer Today channel. In this video, I'm gonna give you not one, but 15 different writing productivity tips, which will help you become a more effective and efficient writer. Hope you enjoy the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. If you wanna get more videos like this or about the writing process, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, I've been a productivity nerd for years I've read all the biggest productivity books. I've even interviewed productivity experts like David Allen, and I wrote about productivity for publications like Forbes. So I'm fascinated by how you can bridge the world of productivity with the world of creativity. And what I've discovered is there's a number of different ways that you can get more done as a writer, but still find time to find great ideas for your stories and balance writing with the rest of your professional life. Let's dive in. Number one, set creative goals. So it's easy to spend all day on busy work because if you're a new writer, chances are you're balancing writing with other competing priorities like a day job, like family commitments, or even with doing things around the house. I'd say to you, ask yourself, what do you want to accomplish with your writing over the next 30, 60, and 90 days? There's no need to go much further than that because any more than 90 days can feel too far away and you'll end up inevitably putting off the writing goal but 90 days is enough time to get something done. In other words, you have enough time to get something done, but not too much time to procrastinate about it. So pick one important creative goal, like writing the first draft of a book, or starting your website and publishing a series of articles on it, and then track your progress towards that goal over the next 90 days. Number two, create a writing habit. So should you get up at five or 6 a.m. to write? Should you meditate or exercise first thing? And how much caffeine do you need to drink before you start writing your first draft? Or should you wait until the end of the day before you sit down to write? Look, it's nice to wake up early and write. That's the routine that I followed for years. It's also nice to write in the evening when it's dark. But your rising time or your evening routine is less important than having a habit of writing consistently. So create an effective writing habit that you follow. That often means writing in the same place at the same time and with the same tools. You can even use subtle triggers which will help you with your writing habit, like listening to noise, cancelling music, or using services like brain.fm. That brings me to my third tip. Book your writing sessions into your calendar. Planning your creative time in ahead means you can protect your writing time in advance. A calendar is your shield and sword in the trenches of modern life. Use it to block book periods of 30 to 60 minutes for when you're going to write. Then you can fill up the rest of the day with everything else you've got to do. If you're a freelance writer, that could mean administrative tasks, or if you're balancing writing with a job, that could mean your job. But if you block book those 30 to 60 minutes in your calendar, they're more likely to happen, and you'll start preparing yourself mentally for when it's time to create. That brings me to my fourth tip, break big writing projects down. Let's say you want to write a book, or let's say you're balancing writing with a full-time job. Then you could make the mistake that I made. You could wait until Saturday and then you could try and spend three, four or five hours trying to write. What's the problem with this approach? Well, inevitably life will intervene or you'll get a better offer. And instead of writing for four or five hours on your book or your writing project, you might only write for 30 minutes. You'll feel bad about your progress and maybe even put it off the following week. Then weeks can go by. Instead, it's far more effective to break your writing projects down. Start small. Write for 15 minutes every day. Anybody can find time for 15 minutes. Or write just 300 words every day. If you do that, over the course of a week, you'll have written several thousand words. Over the course of a month, you'll have more than 10,000 words. Follow this for three to six months or for the 90 days that I talked about and you'll have the first draft of your book or your manuscript. But you'll have more than that. You'll have a writing habit because you've turned up consistently. Number five, prepare your writing in advance. Have you ever sat down in front of the blank page or open up your writing app like Scrivener or Word? Then suddenly found yourself checking email and thought about everything else but the first draft. It's easy to get distracted when you're staring at an intimidating flashing cursor on the screen. Instead, far better to prepare your work the night before. If it's a, if it's a particular type of writing like nonfiction, you could lay out your research and notes the night before. Or with the creative work, you could simply leave yourself a subtle cue in the form of a post-it note on your desk that simply says, write about X. Then when you sit down at your desk the following morning or the following evening or whenever it is, all you have to do is to open up your writing application and immediately start. This also works because it sends a trigger to your subconscious to work on the idea or work on whatever the creative challenge is, even when you're not sitting at the desk. 
ask any creative and they'll tell you creative work often happens when you're doing anything but the task at hand. That said, you still do need to turn up. This is simply about getting into flow state more effectively and efficiently. Number six, avoid writing and editing at once. Writing and editing are different types of creative skills. This is a mistake I learned the hard way. When I used to write short stories, I spent a lot of time attempting to create perfect sentences. So I'd write a couple of hundred words and then go back and reread them and fix them. Then I'd write the same hundred words again and repeat the exercise. I was getting nowhere fast. Instead, it's far better to work on your first draft, not worry about typos or mistakes, and keep going until you hit your target word count. Then set it aside for a couple of hours or a couple of days. The American writer Joan Didion famously put her first drafts in the freezer and then she'd take them out a few months later. Because when you can approach something with fresh and critical eyes, you're more likely to spot the mistakes inside of it. Number seven, dictate your first drafts. Dictation is far faster than typing. Years ago, I used to struggle with repetitive strain injuries. So I started learning more about dictation and how it could help me avoid getting pains in my hand from typing all day at a desk. It took me a while to get into a workflow about dictating. And I've got some tips which will help you on the channel if you're interested in exploring it. But here's the key takeaway. You can speak or dictate thousands of words in the course of an hour compared to what you can produce if you're typing by hand. Dictation is also great because it forces you to keep going. It's harder to edit while dictating, so it'll help you finish the first draft faster. Not only that, but you can dictate while out for a walk, so you can get some exercise in and unlock fresh thinking. I also like dictation because you don't really need anything too expensive. Your chances are you already have a smartphone, so you just need a set of earphones to use with it, and you can use a dictation app like Dragon Anywhere. If you really want to dictate near your computer, you can stand up and use a service like otter.ai. Number eight, track your word count like an accountant. There's an old productivity maxim, what gets measured gets done. That's attributed to the business author Peter Drucker. But basically, as a writer, you should also measure what you spend your time on. So if you're working on a first draft, work how or record how many words you produce each day. Then over the course of a week, review how many words you've produced. You can do all of this in a spreadsheet versus how long you spend writing. Then ask yourself, what can you do or how can you rearrange your routine so you can increase your word count? It's also helpful if you're setting goals for your writing projects, particularly if it's a book. So if you know what the word count is for a section in your book, then you can gauge how far you are away from finish, finishing it and when you need to engage an editor. There's a caveat to this. Tracking your word count is fantastic for first drafts and early drafts. But when you get into the editing process, it's not really helpful to track a word count. What I would recommend instead is track the amount of time you spend editing, because this is still a type of creative work. It's just a different type of creative work to get in the words out of your head and onto the blank page. Speaking of getting words onto the blank page, what should you do if you sit down at your desk and you suddenly get distracted? This used to happen to me all the time. I'd open up Scrivener and then suddenly I'd find myself on Twitter reading inspirational, motivational quotes. Uh, I th tricked myself and told myself that these were going to help me write, but in fact they were just taking time away from the blank page. What I'd say to you is to eliminate whatever writing distractions you can from your environment. Put your phone in airplane mode or if you're using a Mac you can turn on focus mode. Disable all notifications on your computer and also try and block social media using apps like Freedom or Rescue Time. These steps are all fantastic because they can dra dramatically reduce the likelihood that a ding or a noise is going to pull you out of that deep flow state and take your attention. Because it can take 5 to 15 minutes to get back into that flow state. And if you're only writing for 30 to 60 minutes a day, that's a good chunk of your writing time gone. Number 10, write in a coffee shop. Now I said earlier on that a good writing routine often involves writing at the same time, in the same place, with the same tools and using subtle mental triggers. That said, it can get a little bit staid and boring and sometimes you can find yourself procrastinating. If this happens to you, why not take your writing to a coffee shop? Science has proven that the noise within a coffee shop can trigger that kind of productive state uh, more easily than uh, other noisy environments. That said, it has to be more background noise rather than people talking very loudly. So if you have a favorite coffee shop and you think there's gonna be a quiet table there, why not take your first draft and your laptop there for the morning and work away on it? It'll get you out of your regular environment and it might help you come up or approach your writing from a different angle or perspective. Speak Speaking of perspective, my 11th productivity tip is to try free writing. So, I've talked about all these different productivity tips and a critic may say that creativity and productivity don't go hand in hand. If this is something that you're wondering about, embrace free writing. It's a fantastic 
creative strategy which can warm you up for a difficult writing session. It's kind of like when you go to the gym and you do a lot of stretching exercises and some light cardio on a bike or a rower before you do your weightlifting session for the day. Or it's kind of like if you're a runner and you do a couple of easy laps of the track before you do a longer session. Basically free riding warms you up. To do it all you need to do is write about whatever's on your mind. So it could be a journal entry. Write for 10 or 15 minutes without stopping to edit yourself. So it's helping you get into the habit of writing first drafts. And then when you're done, that's it. You just simply move on. The idea of a free writing session is simply to get the words out of your head and onto the page and warm you up. If you want to learn more about free writing, I'd recommend reading the book Writing Down the Bones by Natalie Goldberg. Actually, I recommend listening to the audiobook because she narrates it and she does a fantastic job. My next tip is to find an accountability buddy. So sometimes when you're starting off writing, you go through all of these weird creative problems and you talk to other people about it and they have no idea. Why would they care about word counts or writer's block or procrastination? But when you're in a writer's group, you can talk about all of these problems. I was in a writer's group for years when I was writing short stories and later non-fiction. We used to meet up once a week in the Irish Writer Centre in Dublin. We would exchange stories with each other, talk about the types of authors we were reading and enjoying, and also critique each other's pieces or pieces before sending them to writing competitions. Finding an accountability buddy is also fantastic because you can learn how other writers approach the craft and these types of problems. And these days it's easy to find accountability buddies online as well. Number 13, set writing deadlines. A lot of writers fear deadlines. They feel like they're going to block their creativity or prevent them from getting things done. But deadlines are a type of creative constraint and constraints are a key part of the creative process. And if you're a freelance writer, you actually need to hit your deadlines if you want to satisfy your editors and continue to get paying work. Similarly, if you're an indie author, you may not necessarily have the same types of deadlines, but it's still useful to set them for yourself. So you may need to set a deadline around when you'll send your manuscript to an editor because they could be booked up for the coming months and you don't want to delay publication. Or if you have readers already, you may need to set a deadline so you're not going to let them down. Similarly, I've spent a lot of time interviewing best-selling authors for the Become a Writer Today podcast. The ones who weren't the most have a successful or have built up a back catalogue of work. They do this because they're constantly hitting their deadlines and have a publication schedule for the year. So I'd encourage you to set one and also to have writing deadlines and stick to them. You can also put a deadline in your calendar that's external facing, which your editor knows about, or readers, and then put another one or another deadline in that's closer. So this is one that you'll track and which you'll know about. And if you miss this deadline, you still have a buffer between the deadline you've set and the external deadline. My 14 tip is to keep a to-do list. I know, I know, it might seem fairly rudimentary as productivity tips go, but bear with me. I interviewed David Allen and in his book, Getting Things Done, he proposes a whole system for managing your, your busy personal life and professional life. I recommend you read his book, but there's a key takeaway in the book where he says, your mind is for having ideas, not for holding them. And here's the thing, if you're a freelance writer or if you're taking writing seriously and you want to earn a living from it, you can't be worrying about updating your author websites or invoicing clients or preparing your tax returns when you're working on your article or your book draft or editing your latest manuscript. So when these things or to-do items pop into your head, rather than worrying that you're going to forget them, simply write them down in a basic to-do list that you'll review regularly. Now I've tested dozens of different productivity apps. They're all good, they all do different things, but find one that fits with your workflow. Personally, these days I use Apple Notes and Trello the most. Trello is a little bit more advanced and it's built on a system called Personal Kanban. So you can simply use a to-do list in Apple Notes or in the Notes app on your phone. But just put all of the items there and review them regularly so that when it's time to write, you're not worrying about everything else that's falling down around you. My final productivity tip also comes from David Allen. So you remember my first tip in this video was that you should set writing goals. Well, the key thing about having a writing goal is you need to review your progress towards them. The weekly review is the ideal time to do this. You can typically hold a weekly review on Friday afternoons or on Sunday evenings, either at the end of the week or prior to the start of the following week. During your weekly review, you're gonna ask yourself, what did you write? What did you work on? How did you spend your time? You're gonna look at your calendar for the preceding week and the proceeding week. And this is particularly good because it can help you figure out how you're fitting writing in with your professional life and everything else that's going on. It's also a good time to review your word count, to prepare your notes and so on. 
And you can also figure out what writing projects you want or to get started on over the coming week. This is also a good time to prune items from your to-do list. The process only takes 15 to 30 minutes to do, but it's kind of like a mental reset before the following week. And then you can go about and take the weekend off, or you can you know, write a little bit over the weekend if you do have some free time. Those are my 15 productivity tips for writers. If you'd like to read about them in more detail, I'll put a link to an article in the notes for this particular video. But remember, productivity is fantastic. For a writer, all you need to do is turn up consistently, write a little bit every day, and write about things that will help you advance your writing goals. Hope you enjoyed the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this or about the writing process, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.